Hi, everyone. Thanks. Thanks to the organization for, for having me uh, invite, invited here again. It's a pleasure to, to meet all of you, and I hope everyone is having a, a good show. I'm, I'm going to speak for the next 20 minutes, or maybe a little bit more, about the journey that we've been having in, in our company, in Livalium, but uh, about the, the reasons and the drivers that we've seen in the market that have led us to make some kind of decisions. So in essence, we've, seen, we've been in the market, for those that are not familiar with Livalium, we started in 2006 as a device maker for sensor devices in the IoT, and we've always been playing horizontally, uh, providing a platform to develop any kind of, uh, of project in the, in the IoT. So at this moment, uh, when we look at the, um, at the market, we see that we are facing many challenges, but not only in this market. We are seeing the climate change challenges, the economic struggles that we are suffering, first because of the pandemic, then because of the, of the uh, Russian-Ukrainian war, then it's going to be because of the recession, many things that make business totally different. And there are good news and bad news at the same time. Good news are that for the first time in human history, we have all the tools to solve or at least mitigate all those risks. We have uh, IoT, we have uh, AI, we have machine learning, we have robotics, we have, uh, we have blockchain, we have decentralized networks. We have many tools to fight against those challenges. The problem is that as we've been building more and more pieces in it's more and more and more pieces of technologies, uh, it, the, trying to play the role of putting all those pieces together and, and combining them into a working solution becomes hard and harder. So we need an, an evolution of the IoT. And uh, I've, I, I had a, a couple of informal chats this, this morning and uh, I, I could speak about a common feeling in the, in the floor today, which is we are in a very fragmented industry with, uh, with lots of partnerships that offer are not very meaningful to our companies, but also to the society and to our customers. And we need to change that. But changing that is not only uh, a business transition, it's also a technological one. So let me just recap on, on the, the stages of the IoT that we've identified over the, the past years in Livalium and where do we think that we should go next as an industry. So it, it all started with IoT 1.0. And what's that? Um, well, it was SIGBI. For that, uh, in, in those uh, in those years, we didn't have a, a LoRa one connectivity uh, back then, and sensors, and it was about connecting things, connecting the physical thing to the digital one. Uh, with, with, with with which purpose? Well, with the purpose of performing remote monitoring in the cases where the former way of doing things was going physically somewhere and taking a measurement of, of something. For example, in agriculture, um, and we have an example here, a real example of um, a farmer that wanted to improve their irrigation system. And they, they, they've been using sensors to do that. Their system is a stupid one. The, it's the person operating the system on top of that. They just receive data instead of just going physically and then perform it. For this other solution, which was already um, joining blockchain, but that's not at the purpose of this example. In this case, the, we have a, an, another um, a farmer example. They wanted to monitor and and guess the best moment to fit the, the cows in, the, in order to produce the best milk and to ensure the well-being of the, of the animals. 
And after gathering data for a couple of weeks, um, they found out that they could establish a direct relationship between temperature in the outdoors, the amount of food the, um, the, the cow needed to be fitted, and the production of milk. And as a result, because this is a, one of the, the examples, I really love it because of the numbers, they increase milk production by, by 18% and they reduce the cost of maintenance and, and food by uh, almost 15%. So it, it was winning in all sides. And, and we can say that those examples were went just one step farther than in the in the in the further process. Um, concluding that if we talk about if we can create a second stage, a second uh, era for IoT 2.0, it was about optimizing processes. It was about making decisions from those data and not suggesting the, the user, sometimes even making those decisions in a way that was totally automatic, but uh, and, and giving the information to the, to the users. So now we go to, we make it all the way to today and what do we have today? So we still have sensors, connectivity, platforms, and of course, we have uh, more, lots of AI algorithms that can perform amazing things with the, all the data that we are gathering from the, uh, from, from the world. Um, and the IoT, and that's one thing that I've always loved about this, about this industry, and particularly about, uh, about the LoRa Alliance world, is that we need a, it's about an ecosystem. No one can play a full role for anything here, and and we need that uh, and we need that ecosystem and leadership as well to make this industry evolve. So, what what would be IoT 3.0 if we talk that first first round was about digitizing process and the second round was about optimizing processes? Well. Um, we keep connecting physical world with the digital world. Um, we need to provide all the, we need to make more meaningful partnerships. And by meaningful partnerships, uh, we talk about providing full solutions. Either is, uh, every time we are talking with a, with a customer, we need to be able to provide not only the sensors, but also the connectivity and the solution and the, the whole thing as a package. And after, if AI was the main disruptor of IoT in the former, uh, in the former states, now the next one is gonna be, it's gonna be blockchain. But uh, even although, and this is a disclaimer, I, I cannot consider myself an expert in, in blockchain, just please lower your expectations right now. I, I want to, to make a point before continuing. And I would like, and I know it's after lunch and it's gonna be complicated, but uh, I would like to ask you all, which color is my shirt? Red? Rojo. Is it everyone for red? Is it anyone for orange? You look at it. Does it change with the light? Or are, do we all agree it's red? It is. Okay, well. Well, you, you are all low cost sensors. That's fine, that's not an offense. But uh, I wouldn't trust you if, if I wanted to fit a system to order an exactly matching shirt, skirt to this shirt. Yes, uh, excuse me if I don't trust you. But that's what we are often doing uh, when, when we are using blockchain in our, in our projects today. And I see lots of projects, specifically government projects about uh, 
more important things than colors, for example, air quality and, and pollution, that start things, think that, that blockchain and data integrity starts on chain. Well, we could all agree here that my shirt is red. We could write it in a blockchain and that would be the truth. Whether, it's, whether that truth is going to be useful or not, that's the real point. Because if we fit blockchains with inaccurate or just wrong data, uh, we're going we're gonna to be even worse than uh, without blockchain. Because we will be using bad data within the illusion that we have very, very trusted data. So it all starts with uh, data accuracy and data integrity in the devices before it's even sent it to, the, um, to any cloud. And why is that so important? Because then is the moment when we start really having fun. And we start mixing the IoT with many other um, with many other industries, and and the moment that we will start not seeing IoT at all, IoT won't be the main thing in projects. The the only thing that will matter will be the results and the um, and the outcomes that we are getting. I remember when we were participating um, maybe five years ago in a government pro uh, project in Asia. And the, um, the mayor of the city was asking us, how can I trust data integrity? And we were talking about precision and, and we were talking about securing the data and about all the, all, all the security pro protocols that we were building on, on top of the system. And, and the, the guy, tell us, well, you know, this is, this is a project with consequences. If water quality is not, uh, it's decreasing in, in, in quality, we will close a resort and that has money consequences. If there's going to be money consequences for someone, then someone is going to be very, very interested in in having the, that data change in the system that you have. And we could talk, this is just an example, but that's what happened when we, start, when we meet datocracy. We love this word, I, I love it. I don't know, yes, I do this all the time. Do you feel that living in datocracy, is, is it good or bad? Do, do you feel scared of this world or not? So, so. This is more complicated than, than the color of the of this shirt. Okay, it's after lunchtime, no worries. Um, what's this? This is the point where IoT really starts being useful for, for us, not only for businesses, but also as a society. If we start, we install KPIs and a data culture in our cities, wouldn't it be nice to evaluate our politicians by KPIs, by the results of the, uh, the, the impact of their environmental initiatives or by the impact of their, on their mobility initiatives? If we could trust on different KPIs that are monitoring the, the, um, the, the city, or, for example, in Insurtech is one of the, this is the last example I have. We are cooperating very recently with, a, with an Insurtech company that is aiming to provide insurance policies to recycling companies. And maybe you are not familiar with which problem are we solving there. I, I wasn't aware at all. The problem is that most of recycling companies in Spain, but also in Europe, lack of an insurance policy because insurance companies 
are really, really conservative and they cannot trust, com uh, they cannot afford having the big risk of a fire in, in so many companies. So we want to walk towards sustainability. We are talking about recycling materials and as one of the pillars, one of, one of the, the five R's in, in sustainability, and at the same time, we don't, we are not ensuring the, the economic sustainability of those companies in the time. So we are working with an insert tech company to provide right uh, monitoring, real time monitoring of the, of the facilities of the, of those companies so that we can have an early detection of a fire and even some recommendations as a, as a prevention system. They are adding to that some financial audit and, um, and an initial uh, risk assessment. They put all those things together, they upload that, them into a platform that they facilitate to the reinsurance company. And, that, and then they say, well, now we hope that we are giving you more comfort so that you can insure this company and we are making a big favor to both sides because the recycling company wants an insurance policy and the insurance company wants more customers and we could extend this to more industries 70 percent of the crop lands globally lack of an insurance because of the same because there are not enough resources not enough trustable resources capable to trigger a smart contract to pay a prime in case of a drought or a fire or a, or a, or a major disease in the, in the crop in a trusted way. So I think that just to finish and, and wrap up, if we were talking about IoT 1.0 was about digitizing process and 2.0 was about optimizing processes, um, we can say today that IoT 3.0 will be about short data to ensure businesses and ensure the sustainability of those businesses. Thank you very much.